and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple, creator of the Digimon World Beta TTRPG, the one and only Dry Designs, or better just known as Dry. How are you doing today, man? Hey, thanks for having me. Or Thank you for welcoming me to the temple. Or tonight, in your case. <laughs> <laughs> but... I s normally, when it, normally I start off with the origin story, where somebody got, where somebody got into the hobby. But since this is... An adaptation of Di of Digimon in general and Digimon Wor the Digimon World games specifically. Oh, that means that there's two origin stories that ha that have to be dealt with. So the first one is was was um the Digimon World games the way you broke into Digimon as a whole, or was it through one of the was it through one of the anime first? Um, yeah, it, it was uh, from the anime for sure. Uh, I, I'm a 90s kid, so <laughs> I was um, as introduced to Digimon as everyone else, I think. So uh, Digimon Adventure. World Games came recently, mm -hmm. I'd say. Which... Yeah, uh, um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Is, 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 kind of, is kind of amusing um, seeing how... Seeing how... Digimon has has, for lack of a better term, evolved over over the years in both game and in um, and in and in anime. And in a roundabout way ends up not su ends up not suffering the problem that Pokemon has suffered for the last few years. Um. Yeah. Um. I. I yeah. Digimon is constantly reinventing itself, and I think that. Um, that's an interesting way of uh, of going with the franchise. Um, it's great in a lot of ways because we get to see a lot of the potential. Um, we don't get a lot of the consistency, I guess, uh, which for some people can be can be bad. But I like it uh, because they don't take it too seriously. So we can experiment, we can explore, and we never know what to what to expect. And and that that's cool, I think. And. I know, I know that some, I know that some have um, put labels of the bet of the of the better seasons or worse seasons when it comes to the anime. But really, even the anim even the anime hasn't been consistent in terms of qual in terms of quality over the years. Even with even within a season, oh, like you've you've got some you've got some that are per are decent throughout, and then you have some that have rough starts and then and then um get ri then get really good after a certain arc it's all it's all over the place so it's kind it's kind of a um it's kind of a grab bag you never know what you're going to get yeah yeah for sure um i i find it particularly interesting for example with the zero two the second adventure the the sequel mm -hmm. um how they tried so many different things all throughout the same series, throughout the same season. Um, some better, some worse, I guess. Um, that's that's yeah. up for for interpretation. Um, but but it's cool. Like obviously, I'd prefer to have a a consistent uh, attempt, let's say, or a consistent uh, mechanic, whatever that they they're exploring through and through. Obviously, that leaves a lot uh, uh, to be desired sometimes. But it's also cool to see so many directions that Digimon can go and leaving some for the imagination kind of helps people like us to to draw to uh, explore new ideas to make projects like these um, I think it's great um, the, that sort of that sort of consistency can be a double-edged sword yeah because look at um look at Dragon Quest for instance Dragon Quest has been has been very consistent in its in its approach and its stylings for years, but the problem the problem was a lot of um, other projects that 
took inspiration from Dragon Quest ended up going in their own directions that were able that were able to eclipse it, which is what which is why you're not seeing the kind of fervor that you that you may have seen back back in the day where Dragon Quest was such a staple that 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 the that the release of a new game may as well have been a holiday because there because nothing happens. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. And it's that's not that's not to say I'm disparaging consistency. It's more of it's it's not a black and it's not a black and white affair. You can mm -hmm. be too consistent for your own good. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now that be that being said, obviously there's been obviously there's been a ha there's been a Actually, before, I'm get I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry. On the other end of the spectrum, there's the TTRPG origin story. So, how did you first get How did you first get exposed to tabletop gaming, and what made it stick? Right. Um, I actually started fairly fairly recently. Uh, I was um, on my first uh, first second year of bachelor's uh, when. Uh, uh, a guy from my class uh, invited me to to try it out with uh, with some friends who, who ended up becoming uh, a great group of friends that we still we still uh, hang out and play. Um, and we started with the D and D fifth edition, the the big one. Um, they they were doing a, a campaign. They kind of just slotted me in, and then we did uh, an actual D and D. Uh, uh, homebrew of um, of Digimon, which was so chaotic but so fun, and, and I think that that sense of like uh, friend friendship and chaos and just uh, doing stuff was kind of what sticked with me uh, with games, and uh, that's why I decided to to stay with uh, with the hobby and what made me so passionate about it. Mm -hmm. And. Now, when it comes to when it comes to bait, when it comes to Digimon World, Digimon World, the one that you're developing, obviously mm -hmm. using the World Game Series has been, has been the um, template, for lack of a better term, that you that you're using. Yeah. Um, what made you go with that one as the temp as the template? Uh, right. Um, mainly because I think Digimon World. Um... Is very unique um, in a way that other Digimon media, uh, uh, let's say media as in the anime, the games, uh, everything basically, uh, doesn't have, which is the the Digivolution branches, the Digivolution trees. Instead of a settled line, uh, anything is possible. Um, at, at the time when I was having the the Digimon D&D campaign. We chose our partners, which is great. It's cool. Uh, you get to have your favorite partners. You get to experience that. Uh, and it's more of an anime experience. But then we sort of uh, took a break, and uh, that uh, campaign went on a hiatus. And I was still having that uh, itch that's, uh, um, the itch to play. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started to fill that void with uh, actual play podcasts and... Uh, other uh, campaigns on on stream and on YouTube, um, and I realized that they all had that thing in common, which was the partners were settled. Maybe the players knew beforehand, maybe they didn't, but there was no no sense of uh, probability of uh, we don't know what's going to happen next. And that was my dr main driving force for this game. I wanted to have that Digimon World experience of you're training your partner. Uh, and you know, is maybe it's going better, maybe it's going worse, but you don't know until it it, it uh, digivolves. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen. And, and for me, that's kind of the essence of Digimon in a paradoxical way, since the anime and most things outside of Digimon world don't have. Mm -hmm. Now, the game system that you're using is a fork of Simple World, which is a very stripped down version of powered by the apocalypse. Um, how did you come across Sim how did you come across Simple World by Avery Alder? 
Um, that was actually... So I started to, to research in general, trying to find good systems. Uh, I obviously started with the ones that exist that include Digimon, like uh, uh, Digimon Digital Adventures is one, Animon uh, isn't Digimon-centered, but it's sort of the a general, a general thing. Uh, but none of those satisfied me in the sense that I knew that having branching Digivolutions was going to be a complex system or a mechanic, and the system itself needed to be simpler to allow for that. Um, and then I started to... I was listening to a, a podcast, I don't remember the name, and they were playing Powered by the Apocalypse, I think, and I think it was specifically Kids on Bikes, which... Oh, no, sorry, it was uh, Monster of the Week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which follows the episodic nature of, uh, of anime like Digimon and Pokemon. So it was a, an immediate connection, and as I was listening to it, I, I was thinking, oh, th this has a lot of narrative and uh, roleplay-centered mechanics, which I like. Um, so I started to read about it, and I s found Simple World, like the, the actual uh, website on somewhere, I, I can't remember, and I started to read through it. Uh, and when I got to XP, I said, yep, that's it, that's, that's what I need. Uh, and then I messed around with it, and... Uh, yeah, it happened. Yeah, and of course the big, the main thing that's taken from that's taken from it is the way the the way the two D six approach is handled. You know, failure, mm -hmm. mixed results, and success. Um, that bring that brings me to, and I I suppose I suppose one of the, one of the things that somebody who's familiar with PBTA might have to get used to is the fact that you're not using playbooks. Cuz I don't think simple It's been a while since I've looked at Simple World, but I don't think that used playbooks either. Yeah, it's more of a play sheet, I guess. It's it's simple enough to to boil it down. Uh so yeah, I I I'd say but that's also a, a big difference from Simple World to my system, I think. And instead, instead, a lot instead, a lot of the more custom aspects are gen are generated through the skill system that you have, mm -hmm. and you and it's very much doubling down on skills. And if I'm not if I'm re if I'm reading this right, uh, yeah, in a way, um, uh, I I have the skill glossary which kind of. Uh, lists every skill uh, that I I thought of mm -hmm. um, and written. Um, I I see that more of a guideline because it's still narrative. It's still like simple world where you do something, you have an intention, and uh, the result of the role kind of dictates if the the intention follows through or not. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the main concerns, one of the main critiques uh, early in development was. Uh, that it was a, a little bit too demanding on the GM to find consequences or effects uh, 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 in the moment uh, during play. So I, I thought of okay, let's let's uh, write everything down, stuff that I thought about, how it works, uh, and have that um, on hand uh, during play. But it's never like an actual rule. It's just uh, people. Uh, if they're confused or maybe they don't know what, how to how to handle it, they can consult it. Mm. But otherwise, just go with the flow and uh, do whatever wh whatever's more logical. I think that's still um, uh, the essence of simple worlds uh, can still be found there. But I I try to to help the GM uh, as best as, as I can. Mm -hmm. That ma that makes per that makes perfect sense. Now, with that in with that in mind, oh, the other thing the other thing that is going to be a, is going to be a major pillar when it comes to Digimon themselves is the two element setup that you have. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to that, like, I think one of the big questions that I'd have is how much of a factor does elemental relationships play in a given Digimon's kit, and what and um, what sort of benefit is there if one of them has the same element twice? 
Um, I, I wouldn't say there's a benefit. Basically, uh, elements uh, are very similar to uh, uh, Pokemon types. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm the first to to admit that, uh, but it's it's not the same. The, uh, the elements have a kind of a narrative uh, function in my version of the digital world, uh, the campaign I run and uh, the lore that I that I published. Uh, but it, they're not, um, I wouldn't say they're essential, mm. but they help a lot with organization and knowing, uh, uh, the, for, especially for the GM, to know what skills to give each Digimon, Digimon without knowing the whole list. So let's say uh, a, a Digimon has a fire element. Mm -hmm. That means that skills from that skill table, from the fire skill pool, um, are available, uh, and so they they only have to look at those. If they are double fire, then the skills they'll get are only from uh, that uh, that table, which can be good or can be bad. Obviously, there's not as much variety, but at the same time, you can get uh, um, stronger versions. Let's call it that of fire skills, because you'll always be focusing on, on that part, especially in the beginning. Uh, since rookies learn uh, two skills uh, besides their signature skill, they learn they learn it as soon as as possible, so they can focus on that. But that's pretty much it, and it also helps with choosing digivolution. So uh, two fires obviously can only uh, digivolve into a fire element Digimon of a higher level, while if you have fire and water, for example, you can go to fire or water so it's a, it's a give or take i think uh, a give and take uh it's not better it's not worse it's just uh, a different a different approach mm -hmm. and of course of course when it comes to digivolutions that within the world games as far as the video games that's a bit that's a bit of a labyrinth in of itself in terms of determining factors for mm -hmm. evolution so how do you simplify that for a TTRPG? Right. Um, yeah, th that was a, a great question during development. How do you make uh, bringing your Digimon to uh, the bathroom or feeding it or whatever? How do you simplify it in a narrative game where everything is, is possible? Uh, and that's what brought me to Simple World as the, the skeleton, as the, the base for the game. Because they have something which are bonds, which is basically the relationship between characters in the game, uh, and helping, uh, doing helping action, helping or injuring. Uh, they're they're opposites, but they're the same the same mechanic. Mm -hmm. uh, helping your partner is what yields XP, and that XP also determines the direction of the of the digivolution. So, in very basic terms. Um, if your Digimon is going to attack another, that's a more aggressive, more active uh, action. If you help them, then the XP will be towards the, the more aggressive Digivolution. And the opposite is also true. If the, they're trying to help somebody, trying to heal, or, trying, or just trying to defend themselves and not actually engage, mm -hmm. uh, that's a more passive, more clever, more uh, thought-out uh, action. So the Digivolution reflects that. And there's also all the stuff in the middle, uh, which is a more balanced evolution, and the extremes, of course. If you are always engaging, always aggressive, you run the risk of pushing your Digimon into a dark Digivolution. And if you basically don't do anything, uh, you probably get the the thing that I think everyone that played Digimon World 1 gets uh, in, on their first try, which is the, the Numemon, the, the slugs and the, the poops. Mm -hmm. um, there are also other skills that uh, uh, also give XP in very specific conditions. But we don't need to get into those. But the base of it is: if you help your partner, he will, he or she will grow uh, accordingly uh, to according to your playstyle. All right, that certainly makes sense. Now, within the, within that, when it comes to this, when it comes to the skill systems, it's not. It's not skills in the traditional um, sense for the most part. It, it 
it is, if, if anything, the skills are the closest thing to moves in a traditional PBTA game, if I'm reading this correctly. Um, yeah, I would say they're close to moves. I like to think of them as tools uh, more than more than specific moves, because they don't give an, um, a specific des description of what they do. Uh, but they sh I try to show at least uh, what they can do and what the consequences are if they fail. Uh, for example, uh, I will give two skills which I use a lot in, even in my games, I like to use this, this example. Uh, you have the Ignite object and the Create Flame skills. Both are related to fire. Both include some sort of uh, make, making fire, some sort of uh, uh, move like that. But while one of them is more of a fireball or flamethrower, uh, sort of uh, just exploding fire out of your mouth like a fire breath or out of your hands, mm -hmm. uh, which is Create Flame, um, Ignite Objects is more of a matchbox. You can have a very controlled fire, very small, very deliberate. Uh, and that's what makes a difference, I think. You can use both to light a campfire, for example. But they have different consequences, they have different... Uh, um, they have different advantages and disadvantages, and I think that's the, the, the core of how the skills work. They are tools, they are matchboxes and flamethrowers, and you can try to use them in different ways, and I always encourage creative ways of using those skills. But obviously they're, they're as good as you, as you can uh, use them. Mm -hmm. That certainly makes sense. Now, with... Now, the, co now the core material for the, for the game is split into three books. The handbook, um, lore and world building, and skill glossary. You've already kind of gone over um, skill glossary, and with mm -hmm. with lore and world building, the digital world takes a, has taken a lot of different forms and a lot of and a lot of different regions over the over the years. So when it comes when it comes to doing when it comes to doing that for this game. Um, how do you make sure that there's a that there is um, some sort of some sort of founding outli outline that people can build around? Because everybody's going to build the digital world in their own way. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, the system itself is very uh, forgiving in that because uh, the Lorian World Building book was the last book I published. It was like a year, maybe a few months, a year um, after the first two. And people were already doing their digital world, which is great. Uh, it's 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 awesome to see uh, how people interpret the the digital world and the, how the system works within that. Uh, some people also use the real world, which is also very a very interesting uh, a very interesting uh, approach to it. Um, and and it, basically, it works. So everything in lore and world building is just how I would do it. And I give those those guidelines, and I'll get to them in a second. I give those guidelines, uh, but I don't think they're necessary or they're they're not essential. Uh, they're a great tool to help with those that don't have a specific idea in mind, uh, and they they are very uh, consistent to how I run the games. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so how I how I put them is. Everything I think is centered around how time works in in the digital world or in the games. I'm not a big fan of using like hour hours and I use turns obviously. That's a that's me mechanical time, but I don't use hours and oh this effects uh, last for eight hours or this uh, lasts for five minutes. Uh, I like to give the stage to the players and once I believe and the players agree that. We've done everything we can do for that stretch of time. We move on to the next one. And that's something I, I think is reflected in the digital world games as well. You have the daytime that runs like for half the uh, the length of the day. Uh, uh, and then you have the nighttime and it's the same thing. It's the, the other half. And I use that. Uh, and I plan around how how many days you go from one 
stretch of land to the other, how, what happens during the day, what happens during the night, how is it different. Uh, basically, I have two uh, types of locations. I have settlements, which are cities, camps, villages, everything that is more civilized and where Digimon kind of just, uh, um, just uh, hang around. I would say mm -hmm. uh, File City from Digimon World 1 is the best uh, uh, example of what settlement is. And then the wilderness is where you find uh, all the wild Digimon, where you will probably get attacked or... Uh, where the adventure itself happens, I think. Uh, and they both work around that system of days and nights. Uh, in settlements, you have activities, for example, working the fields, uh, if you want to help out and maybe uh, make some, get some rewards for it. You can work, and you work the full day, and then night is another, is another stretch of time, and you can use that in, the, in different ways. And with the wilderness, it uses days of travel, so let's say that from one settlement to the other you have to go through a forest and that stretch of land is two days of travel so you go in the first day and you can rest at night or travel also at night which isn't usually isn't recommended because the uh, the forests may be may be more dangerous at night but uh, you can travel and during that travel you can also get encounters which you roll um, you can find resources, which are always list between the resources. Uh, and that's how you build the, the, the world. You just grab a location, grab another location. Okay, what happens between those locations? What dangers are there? What rewards can you find? What treasures can you look for? Uh, and then you go through, you expand through all directions. And that's what I plan uh, on doing with the, with the world. I, I made one adventure, which has one stretch of land. And then we'll see wh where it goes from there. Now, with the, with that in with that in mind, um, obviously the obviously the thing is in is in beta currently one point oh point three. Um, what would you say were are some of the things that you f that um you feel you feel you feel you plan on improving on in the in the coming um iterations of the game? Um, well. In terms of imp of direct improvement mm -hmm. uh, in the system, I'm still not sure. Uh, I I plan on adding more mechanics. Uh, maybe one thing that I find a lot of people have have been asking for or trying to work in is more uh, human or tamer uh, skills or progression in a way because um, in this in this game the partners the Digimon are the progressing characters are the ones that grow in, in levels, are the ones that gain new skills. And the tamers are kind of just there as a a, a guide or a um, just a stagehand that's helping the, the actual uh, protagonists. Um, but some people like to play a more active role, uh, and that's cool, obviously. Uh, but the system doesn't support that much... Uh, uh, right now, so I kind of want to try and find ways to help tamers become more powerful or just adapt better to the digi digital world, which isn't their home. So my my initial idea was uh, humans in the digital world wouldn't fare well by themselves. So I kind of wanted to reflect that. But I understand uh, that a lot of people would like to be more active in the games uh, as humans. So I, I try to adapt to that and try to find. Uh, solutions. So I, I would say that's the the, the biggest improvement I I try in the future, uh, and then add more Digimon. Uh, try to make everything clearer. Uh, I'm always trying to see what uh, people get confused about and try to to fix it. Maybe try to reorganize how the books are divided. Uh, there are some things that I find as I've done the third book that maybe the could be on the first book and vice versa. Um, we'll see. We'll see about that. But mainly, I would say uh, tamer participation, and more Digimon, and more mechanics, more adventures. Just expanding on the the existing world. Mm -hmm. I can I can certainly get that. Now, and I'll be I'll be looking forward to seeing how th how things develop within the system. But 
with all of that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens here. <laughs> no problem. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, it's been great talking about my my passion project. Mm -hmm. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. Thank As you. I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> All right. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!